This is Michelle Swenson. Welcome to Truth Seekers Health Justice. Today, looking at efforts to heavily market private Medicare Advantage plans and the schemes used to maximize shareholder and CEO profits that compromise enrollees' health care access. We will hear from an insurance broker and a former insurance executive whistleblower about how billions of dollars in annual overpayments to Medicare Advantage drain the Medicare Trust Fund, thus compromising traditional Medicare. Since 1966, a year after President Lyndon B. Johnson signed Medicare into law, congressional and executive figures funded by corporate money have expanded the role of private health care companies as profiteering middlemen within Medicare. Medicare privatization was boosted by the George W. Bush administration's 2003 passage of the Medicare Modernization Act. The 2003 law instituted an alternative payment structure as means to funnel more money toward expansion of private insurance plans marketed as Medicare Advantage plans. Estimates of annual government overpayments to Medicare Advantage were reported to range from $12 billion to $25 billion. Amy Goodman on Democracy Now! on October 12, 2022, reported on the New York Times piece, The Heist of Billions of Dollars of Excess Profits by Private Health Insurance Companies Exploiting Medicare Advantage Plans by Overbilling the System and defrauding public funds. A major investigation by The New York Times this weekend has found many of the nation's largest health insurance companies have made billions of dollars in profits by exploiting the government's Medicare Advantage program. Eight of the ten largest Medicare Advantage providers have overbilled the government. Six of the ten have been accused of fraud by the government or company whistleblowers. This comes as the number of people enrolled in the privatized system continue to grow. Under the system, health insurers get more government funding for sicker patients, which has given the companies an incentive to make patients appear more ill than they actually are. The New York Times reports doctors at Kaiser were offered bottles of champagne and bonuses if they added additional illnesses to the medical records of their patients so the company could make more money. Author of Deadly Spin an insurance company insider speaks out on how corporate PR is killing health care and deceiving Americans. Wendell Potter relates how CMS has turned a blind eye to regulating the insurance industry, permitting lobbyist influence to prioritize profits over health care. Noting that Medicare Advantage is an enormous cash cow for insurance companies, Potter cites Medicare Advantage as a prime reason for record commercial insurance profits during the pandemic. It's important to note that it is neither Medicare nor is it an advantage. It is, I think, will be recognized in years to come as probably the biggest heist, the biggest fraud, the biggest transfer of wealth from taxpayers, middle income, low income Americans to corporate executives and shareholders. It is a private program operated by private insurance companies. Most are for-profit. This year, over 80 percent were people enrolling in for-profit plans. They're lured into these plans with deceptive advertising. It's not because Congress has never seen this kind of information before. They've known this, but they've turned a blind eye in many cases because of the massive amounts of our money that these big corporations are spending to lobby Congress, to throw money into their campaigns for re-election, and to propaganda campaigns. That that is a classic example of regulatory capture. What that means is that the companies, the corporations, administrative offices like uh, CMS, the Center for Medicare Services uh, and Health and Human Services, they have such influence over these agencies that they don't act on behalf of, of Americans. They act on behalf of corporations to protect their profits. There's this revolving door between private industry and government, and again, massive amounts of money that fund all this lobbying and propaganda. One of the administrators of CMS uh, some years ago went straight from that job into the insurance industry as head of America's health insurance plans, which is called AHIP. 
Connor observes that many legislators and appointees move through the Washington revolving door, alternating between positions as industry lobbyists and government policymakers. Liz Fowler is just one who has traveled through Washington's revolving door, moving from an executive position with WellPoint Health Insurance to a position in the Obama administration where she helped write the Affordable Care Act. Within the ACA law, Fowler helped draft the CMMI program, ultimately responsible for the Trump administration direct contracting entities and the Biden administration's ACO REACH program, both designed to privatize all of Medicare moving seniors on traditional Medicare without their consent to privatized insurance plans. Fowler's subsequent positions have included vice president for pharmaceutical giant Johnson & Johnson and returned to government as Biden administration overseer of the CMMI Medicare program that she helped create. Christopher Westfall has been an independent health insurance broker for 26 years, working principally with traditional Medicare and Medicare Advantage plans. In his informative YouTube videos, he reports closely tracking studies of Medicare and Medicare Advantage plans. An informational link on Westfall's website, SeniorSavingsNetwork.org, is titled AllAboutMedicareAdvantage.com. He notes that brokers are incentivized to sell Medicare Advantage plans, which pay twice the commission that sales of traditional Medicare supplement plans pay. Too often, Westfall observes, brokers provide false information about Medicare Advantage plans. Individuals discover after purchasing a Medicare Advantage plan that their doctor is not in the network. If they continue to see their own doctor, they are responsible to pay out-of-pocket, out-of-network costs. Here's the problem. The federal government pays Medicare Advantage plans a monthly amount for each enrollee regardless of how much care that person needs. They're getting paid anyway. This raises the potential, this is quote, the potential incentive for insurers to deny access to services and payment in an attempt to increase profits. That's according to the April analysis by the Department of Health and Human Services Inspector General. It's the profit motive. The health plan gets to decide. And the least they pay for you, the difference is that's their profit. And that's why the Office of Inspector General said that is the sole incentive of Medicare Advantage plans. Investigators found that nursing home coverage was among the most frequently denied services by the private plans and often would have been covered if under traditional Medicare. This is from Kaiser Health News. The article says nursing home surprise. Advantage plans may shorten stays to less time than Medicare covers. After 11 days, this is the story here, after 11 days in a St. Paul, Minnesota skilled nursing facility, recuperating from a fall where she broke her hip, Paula, 97 years old, was told by an insurer that she should return home. The facility gave her a choice, pay several thousand dollars to stay in this rehab that she needed, appeal the company's decision, or just go home. Healthcare providers, nursing home representatives, and advocates for residents say Medicare Advantage plans are increasingly ending members' coverage for nursing home and rehab services before patients are healthy enough to go home. Eric Krupa, an attorney at the Center for Medicare Advocacy, a nonprofit law group that advises beneficiaries, said, in traditional Medicare, the medical professionals at the facility decide when someone is safe to go home. In Medicare Advantage, the plan decides. Not uncommonly, Medicare Advantage plans stack the deck by cherry picking, that is, manipulating the system to sign up healthier people. They also practice lemon dropping, a form of manipulation that leads to elimination of sicker or chronically ill patients from coverage. This is a story by Cheryl Clark from MedPage Today Online. Medicare Advantage plans have been under increasing scrutiny and investigation because so many of them have been accused by federal agencies of denying care, exaggerating the severity of illnesses to pull billions more from Medicare, and delaying care with lengthy prior authorization requirements. Surveys of physicians have consistently found that excessive authorization controls required by health insurers, Medicare Advantage, 
are persistently responsible for serious harm when necessary medical care is delayed, denied, or disrupted. The Medicare Advantage appeals process for denied care is lengthy. Reportedly, 78% of Medicare Advantage healthcare denials were reversed in one year, strongly indicating a high rate of wrongful denial of care. North Carolina Congressman Gregory F. Murphy, a practicing physician, addressed Congress in October of 2022 about the effects of delayed medical treatment. Mr. Speaker, I'd just like to explain to the public what pre-authorization means. I'm a practicing physician, so if I order a test, I recommend a surgery, it then goes into a bucket at an insurance agency. And then we play the great waiting game. It was put in and accepted and for what I believe was a good cause. It's something that has gone bad and gone terribly wrong. I may be waiting to two, three, two or three or four weeks to speak with somebody who's not my peer, I'm a surgeon, to get their approval of something that I know needs to happen. It's an absolutely antiquated system that does not work. I saw a prostate cancer patient. Either he needed to be operated on very quickly or he needed intensive chemotherapy quickly. A week goes by, two weeks go by, What's that patient doing at home? He hasn't slept one wink. His entire life is then suspended in front of him. It took three weeks, three weeks, to get the study that every urologist in the country knew was necessary to get that answer. Yet in the meantime, that patient has lost years just in life. As far as worry, our medical system has become bankrupt and part of these pre-authorizations are part of it. I look at the doctors that I have worked with we know what we're going to recommend for our patients after years of study and work with patients is going to be possibly been denied by someone who has no experience, who's been told by insurance companies, deny, deny, and deny until they wear out the doctor and wear out the patient. Insurance broker Chris Westfall observes that coverage by traditional Medicare with a supplement plan is written for life but Medicare Advantage plan benefits and coverage may change every year as doctors and hospitals leave Medicare Advantage networks at will. Medicare Advantage drug formularies, medications may be dropped at any time. Medicare Advantage insurers can withdraw plans that are not profitable at any time. Two different worlds here. You got original Medicare, hopefully with a supplement plan. Go anywhere you want to, get all the care that's medically necessary without any prior authorization or pre-approvals. The Mayo Clinic last week sent out a letter. Mayo warns it won't take most Medicare Advantage plans. Letter sent to Florida and Arizona patients suggest they should enroll in original Medicare as well as Medicare supplements. Stat News reported this month that artificial intelligence is driving the denials by Medicare Advantage to new heights. A recent investigation has revealed that Medicare Advantage insurers are now using unregulated predictive algorithms of artificial intelligence under the guise of scientific rigor as excuse to determine when to terminate payments for patient treatments, often prematurely terminating treatment for vulnerable seniors. In a YouTube video, insurance broker Christopher Westfall covers the Senate report released November 3, 2022, titled Deceptive Marketing Practice Flourish in Medicare Advantage. The Senate Finance Committee, chaired by Senator Ron Wyden, released a report confirming deceptive marketing practices by Medicare Advantage plans. The report revealed that enrollees' complaints increased significantly from 2020 to 2021. Wyden called it unacceptable for this magnitude of fraudsters and scam artists to be running amok in Medicare. The report called for ensuring adequate oversight of commercial health plans. Rather than use Medicare trust fund money to expand and improve traditional Medicare to cover all U.S. residents, as a Congressional Budget Office study confirms is doable. Moneyed insurance industry interests influence legislators on both sides of the aisle who are showered with copious private health insurance campaign contributions. The Save the Medicare Act proposes that 
Part C, Medicare Advantage, be renamed Alternative Private Health Plan. As noted, Medicare Advantage is not Medicare, nor is it an advantage. This is Michelle Swenson. Thank you for joining Truth Seekers Health Justice. At the root of the bankrupt U.S. healthcare system are the commodification of healthcare and the co-option of the public commons by corporate profiteers who purchase legislators and policy. 